these men are all Freemasons, and these are Freemasons, and so are these. He is a Mason, and so is he. They come from all walks of life, from all businesses and professions. They come from a wide variety of backgrounds and places, but they have one thing in common. They have discovered a fraternity, the free and accepted Masons, and they are all brothers. Welcome to Modern Freemasonry, as we give you a glimpse into the fraternity that has affected men's lives for centuries, and why I and thousands like me share this special brotherhood. When I first explored this great fraternity, I didn't know much about the rich histories and traditions of masonry, but I did see the special interactions of the members of the lodge, and saw firsthand what real brotherhood was all about. These guys considered their fellow lodge members as a type of extended family, and I was impressed by the closeness they shared. As I learned more about my fraternity, I knew that my decision to be part of this grand society was one of the best ones that I would make for my personal and professional development. As I began to see how I fit into an organization that has affected the lives of many of our U.S. presidents, starting with George Washington, and includes some of the greatest movers and shakers of the past 300 years, I knew that I would benefit from these rich traditions, the same values and traditions that helped these men become better men and having the same effect on me today. The mythical beginnings of the fraternity date back to the building of the Temple of King Solomon in Jerusalem around 1000 BC. But the accepted origins of modern Freemasonry can be traced to the stonemason guilds that formed during the Middle Ages. The trade secrets of building Gothic cathedrals from massive stones without the use of mortar and with the use of geometry to turn a small drawing into an enormous structure were jealously guarded secrets secrets not even divulged to the priests of the churches who employed them. The guilds were developed to train masons in these skills, to enforce a standard of workmanship, and to hold their members to those high standards, as well as protect those valuable secrets. As the Gothic style of architecture lost its popularity and the common people became better educated across Europe, the Masonic guilds lost their reason for existence. But as the Age of Enlightenment dawned, a group of philosophical men saw in masonry the ideal metaphor for character building in men. Construction of a strong, well-balanced structure built with the assistance of many like-minded men and dedicated to God, much like the cathedrals of old. By the early 1700s, Freemasonry had changed from a guild of operative masons who actually built buildings to a character-building society of speculative masons, dedicated to taking good men and making them better. The fraternity of free and accepted masons has been an integral part of culture of the civilized world throughout much of recorded history, and part of American society long before the colonists took up arms against the crown in 1776. Many Americans don't realize that the development of America as a nation is interwoven with Masonic history, an illustration of Masonic traditions and values at work. These ideals of faith combined with tolerance, charity and responsibility, and belief in the intrinsic goodness and equality of man were carved into the foundation of our nation by men who first learned to practice them in a lodge. George Washington, Ben Franklin, John Hancock, James McHenry, and James Monroe were Masons. Nine Freemasons signed the Declaration of Independence, and 10 signed the Constitution, and 14 U.S. Presidents have been Masons. As a Mason, I've taken advantage of the many benefits of membership, and of course I'm having a lot of fun doing it. I came to realize that my fraternity serves me in a lot of ways, some of which I didn't expect at first. The members of my lodge are not just a collection of brothers who get together on meetings and other functions. They serve as a social outlet and mentors for achieving my goals. Masonry has introduced me to business and civic leaders that I otherwise may have never known. These personal connections represent just a slice of the fraternity's benefits. My fellow lodge members are also ready and willing to help me on a personal level, as they will be for you. The fraternity's great mix of ages and backgrounds 
lends itself to a personal support system, an experienced group of men who helped me with challenges they've faced before. And most importantly, my brothers have become lifelong friends in the fraternity experience of a lifetime. Freemasons hold true to a set of timeless values, which makes the fraternity as impacting and relevant today as it has been for centuries. These enduring tenets have helped to guide men's lives, taking good men and helping them become better men by holding true to brotherly love, relief, and truth. These Masonic values are not just empty words on paper. No, to Masons, they represent a daily guide for living. These values we hold up to help us to gain a deeper appreciation of becoming better family men, better professionals, and better citizens. The Masonic fraternity also develops leadership abilities among its members. Masons can utilize and hone their abilities by serving as lodge officers, mentors, and committee leaders. But masonry also provides many other opportunities for further involvement, all of it fun and all rewarding. But what do masons do? Masons meet in a lodge, its members are taught its precepts by a series of ritual dramas which follow ancient forms and use stonemason's customs and tools as allegorical guides. These are called degrees, and you've probably heard of them before. In a Masonic Lodge, a man must complete three degrees to become a full member. Like the old medieval guilds, he is initiated as an inner apprentice passed to the degree of fellow craft, and finally raised to the degree of a master mason. When you join a lodge, you'll make friends that will last a lifetime, from all walks of life and every economic and social and religious background. More than that, you will quickly find as you travel the country and the world that Freemasons are everywhere, and they share a bond with you solely because of the experience you share in common. Once a man becomes a Master Mason in his home lodge, he can enjoy further brotherhood and involvement in other Masonic organizations known as appendant bodies, including the Scottish Rite, the York Rite, and the Shrine. Because Masons are an eclectic mix of men from all walks of life, the other groups have developed over the years to enlarge upon the lodge experience. They offer deeper understanding of involved leadership as well as charitable, and philanthropic activity. History, symbolism, charity, personal growth and development, friendships that last a lifetime, it's all part of this incredible worldwide fraternity. To become a Freemason, simply ask for a petition from the person who gave you this DVD. He'll assist you in filling it out and tell you when it will be considered by the Lodge. He'll also ask for an initiation fee and you'll need to give that to him when you complete your petition for membership. I can personally tell you the impact the Masonic Fraternity has had on my life, even in the short time that I've been part of it, from forming a support network of caring friends, getting real life leadership experience, and meeting men from all over who enjoy helping me succeed. And not just any men, men I call my brothers. <laughs>